In real life, big words can make you sound clever, but when it comes to songwriting, they're usually more trouble than they're worth. They can be hard to sing and a nightmare to rhyme. The whole idea is to bring people into the song and let them get lost in it. If they have to stop and think, you're losing their attention. Just write. I think that that's the main thing. Just write anything. Even if it's bad, just keep writing it. If you don't write, you won't get better. Another songwriting tip that I have is finished is sometimes better than perfect. I can't tell you how many times I've like sat at a piano and like been writing a song and been like, this is terrible, I should just quit, like this is so bad. But I like force myself to finish it or at least like finish the idea or whatever, or like finish the verse and chorus. And lots of the times I come back and I'm like, oh wait, that was actually like great. Like I was getting like really in my head about it. And so you're never gonna learn from something if you just like throw it away the second you think it's not good and you're never gonna learn how to like craft something good if you just like are waiting for like just like lock in a bolt of inspiration to strike you. Really like showing up um, for your creativity and not just waiting for like a lightning bolt idea or like something to inspire you. I think sometimes you just have to work and write and create even when you don't feel particularly inspired because I think when you continuously show up, you like show the universe that you are capable of bringing this idea to life and you know manifesting it in the way that it's supposed to be manifested and like I'm, like spiritual in that way where I think that like the universe like pays attention to that and then will give you better ideas. So you know and that was sort of the exercise that I did over quarantine is I like forced myself to write a song. Not force myself, that sounds like that sounds sad and scary, but like I sat down at the piano and was like, okay, I'm gonna write a song every day of quarantine and I feel like that made me a much better songwriter and you know I think some of the ideas I, I wouldn't have, you know, gotten to jot down if I didn't, you know, make myself do that every day. So I think showing up is really important. It's more important than being talented or good at anything, because like, you can be super talented, but if you don't show up, what's the point? A song begins, it has to begin with an idea that almost encompasses the whole song before you've written it. In other words, it, ha it has to have an integrity from the title, <laughs> you know, a hook, if you like, and then I write backwards from that. I don't just sit down with a guitar and write the first line, you know, because then you have to write a second line. I'll write something that, that can expand into a whole song, some idea. Driver's License coming out has sort of immensely affected my songwriting process and my music, you know, making brain, I guess. But I, I thought actually when it came out and when it, it you know, started getting to be really successful, I thought that I was gonna get in my head about my writing and be like, oh, I'm never gonna write anything as good as driver's license, ah, and like fret about everything. But I actually really think it gave me a lot of confidence in my voice and in what makes my songwriting special, which I feel like is my vulnerability and honesty. And so kind of learning that that's what people resonated with kind of helps me with writing all of my other music. My thing is like, usually when I'm in my phone, you know, it's because right. you said something or you said something or someone said something that's prompted me to be like, oh, I gotta write that down. It doesn't even have to rhyme, you know, right away it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, a thought, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be a, a bar. It just can be like something you said like even like I think the last thing I wrote down was like uh, someone last night was like, man, I feel like I've become a recluse. And I was like, man, recluse, that's such a great word. I love that <laughs> word. And I just write down, I write down like, use the word recluse, you know, right. somewhere. So if you hear recluse in a rap. It's uh, listen to music like a songwriter. Uh, I have grown exponentially from doing this. I think it is the best way to grow as an artist in any way is to draw on inspiration from people that you look up to. I literally will like listen to music that my idol made watch all of their interviews and then go back and be like, okay, I'm gonna like try to write a song like as if they were writing this song. And it just like completely like broadens your horizons. I'm obsessed with the way that Taylor paints pictures and her imagery is fantastic and her storytelling is just like insane. So I don't think I'm as good of a storyteller as she is yet, but I always try to like put aspects of that sort of narrative singer songwritery type lyricism in my songs. I think Lord really teaches me a lot about like production and like actual music music. I think she always makes such interesting choices and so I try to do that. And also she's a brilliant lyricist as well and she's super poetic and you can tell that like lots of her songs started out as poetry and so some of my songs start out that way too when I try to emulate her. Also a big like lyrical inspiration for me is Phoebe Bridgers. She's just like so like brutally honest and says stuff that you like wouldn't think of being in a song. And I think that's impactful and beautiful and so I sort of try to do that as well. I create music at a different pace from everybody else and I think I, I would attribute that, that to the fact that in order to get in there and really make something, I have to have, it has to have some emotional value. Mm -hmm. Meaning I can't get in there every night and churn out four songs like a factory, you know? I can't 
turn, I don't work in bulk because my music, everything I do, you know, really comes from experiences and I don't have enough <laughs> of those like, you know, heavy experiences to make four songs, you know, a night. I, I may be able to finish one song a week, you know, we work on it, I mean, we tweak it, we, and especially this, this, this time around, you know, I'm really taking my time um, to, uh, you know, when I think I have the hook, I might move it to the verse and mm. then try and do something better for the hook. And then when I think that's the hook, I might make that the bridge and do, and you know, so it ends up really um, being some great, some great writing. And, right. Uh, All right, fourth tip is to write songs for yourself and because you love it and you like to do it. The second that you sort of start writing a song with the intention of it being liked by other people, it loses its magic. At least for me, like if I ever like go on like Twitter or like whatever, or, like look at people like consuming my song or you know, criticizing it or whatever, and then I take that with me in my writing and I'm like, oh wait, but people won't like this if I do this. Or like, oh, I have to do this if people like it. It just absolutely like ruins it. You know, honesty is always relatable and you don't have to like try to relate to like large audiences. You just have to tell your story because you know, humans are all so much more alike than we are different and we're all feeling so much of the same things that we just don't talk about. The last songwriting tip I have is to read poetry. As much poetry as you can, I feel like that really informs my lyricism. I think I have to start a song with a lyrical concept or idea. I'm like a very lyric, narrative story based songwriter um, and everything else kind of is secondary to that. So in order to write a song that I like, it has to be either a poem that I like or like a concept or like a play on words that I can sort of go from. The hook of Deja Vu is when she's with you, do you get Deja Vu? And it's this sort of concept that I I'm really obsessed with and I think something that my friends and I were going through where it's like sometimes when you break up with someone and they get with somebody else it sort of feels like everything that they're doing is recycled which happens in every relationship I think 